There we go. All right, so we've, uh, we've been talking a lot about fears lately, and so I just kind of wanted to go over that for just a minute. Um, fear is just an emotion. We know that, right? It's what we, what we attach with that emotion. It's what we make of it, right? Because fear is just an emotion, just like love, just like excitement, joy, right? Um, apprehension, they're just emotions. And so many times I hear things like, well, I'm just so afraid. Okay, I'm just so afraid. Well, I get that because fear is a normal part of life. And, and if we can take away this, um, this being afraid of being afraid, then things will start shifting for you guys. So how do we overcome fear? Well, let's talk about some instances in your life that you were afraid. Okay, now think about it. Like really think about it. What are some times in your life that you were really afraid? And don't go into detail. Just like real quick, like I was afraid in this instant. So share, go ahead and you guys can keep your phones unmuted unless there's like crazy background noise. In which case we should probably get you to a different location. <laughs> All right, anybody wanna go? Come on. Well, I can go. Um, there was last weekend, I mean, I don't know. There was last weekend, there was a block party in my neighborhood and um, I, brought like flyers and everything to share my Tuesday because it was a neighborhood block party and I was paralyzed by fear to tell anybody to talk to anybody about it so okay was, okay was, yeah so that's a really really good example all right? all right let's all remember that example guys don't forget it because we're going to discuss that so um what are some instances in your past that you were afraid. Just anything, guys. Thanks. And you were a kid. I mean, I don't care when. I was afraid to start going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> so, Angela, afraid to go to the gym. Not anymore now, but I was fearful and have panic attacks every time I'd go in. Right. So that was an instance in your life that you were afraid to do something. So anything, come on, I want to get, get a couple. I want everybody to at least one example of when they were afraid in life. Just one time in their life they were afraid. So I, I, I've always been heights, heights get me every single time we were at uh, this carnival Easter weekend and my four year old wanted to go on what's that big thing that goes Ferris wheel. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. So but, like, how do you tell your four year old? No. Right. So, right. um, so yeah, that, that wasn't fun for the first two minutes. <laughs> All right. Who else? So I was, um, my son just turned 18 and started driving finally after, after waiting forever to get his license. And even though he's 18, that still scared me half to death. Still does sometimes. Yeah, I can't even imagine being in that place yet. And all you parents of teenagers, I, I just, yeah, anyway. I can't imagine having one of my kids behind the wheel. Like, <laughs> but anyway, maybe Hiram. I can probably handle Hiram. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Who else? Everybody has to share at least one time in their life they were afraid of something. It can be anything. Think outside the box. Well, my I should. Oh. All right. Go ahead. Um, my two kids were in a bus accident about a year and a half ago <clears throat> and I wasn't home when it happened and I, all I could think of, you know, I just kept praying that they'd be okay, which my son still has concussion headaches from it, but, um, it could have been so much worse. They were rear-ended by a cement mixer. Oh gosh. In a school bus? In a school bus. That's actually interesting because I, I watched the news report on the, on a bus being hit by a concrete mixer truck. It might have been us. We lived in Crestwood. Probably you guys. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I'm an avid news watcher. Okay. Who else? Let's get a few more. And just blurt, blurt it out. You don't have to wait for anybody. Um, one of my fears is this, um, this past Saturday, driving home from um, – Las Vegas and going over the mountain and it's raining and and the road gets very icy. I was hanging on and praying 
to God that we would make it home safe. Yeah. Okay, good one. All right, anybody else want to share? Yeah, I'm afraid of job interviews. That's why I do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't want to leave anybody out. Anybody else? I have a fear of uh, accountability. It plagues me. Like I, I'm always nervous. Like I'm not doing enough to satisfy everybody's needs. And I guess I'm a white, so I guess that's pretty understandable. I like for everybody to just be happy. So that's one of my biggest fears. Is just is everybody stinging happy and is it all good and yay we get to move on and <laughs> happen a lot so that's where i get held up yeah this okay. is michael by the way oh yeah i got you all right okay so the reason why we're talking about this guys and i did a short little video about it but we've been talking so much about fears and and i and you guys should know this by talking to your teammates and other people Fear comes up all the time. I'm afraid to do this. I'm afraid to do that. I'm afraid to talk to this person. I'm afraid of putting my goals out there in case I fail. I'm afraid like my kids are letting people down, right? So these are, um, I'm gonna mute everybody real quick and then just unmute yourself if you're talking. But it's, it's normal guys to be afraid. It is just an emotion and our whole life is riddled with moments of fear, right? But for some reason, we want to put this bad rap on fear. Well, let's talk about, you know, some good instances where we're afraid, okay? Because I can, I can name you a dozen or, okay, a lot more than that of, of times in my life when I was afraid and yet I still did it because it was something I wanted to do. Like the first time I went snowboarding, the first time I bungee jumped, when I married my husband, when I had my first baby, um, when I did go into my first job interview, which was a job that I really wanted, right? Uh, I was like... 14, whatever, almost 15 and trying to be a lifeguard, <laughs> right? Crazy that you can, you know, in those days, you couldn't be a bagger until you were 16, but you could be a lifeguard at 15. Anyway, one of those things in life. Um, so, um, you know, what, what other times? Um, Angela, like going to the gym, she was afraid to go to the gym, but she wanted to go to the gym, right? Now, some of you shared instances of, of safety, you know, um, Eric, you know, though his life was not really in danger, felt like for a little bit his life was in danger. <laughs> but he did it anyway because he wanted to please his baby, right? And any parent understands that. Um, you know, Catherine, the block party, totally afraid, totally afraid to share. Why? Well, were you really afraid that anybody was going to do anything harmful to you? Were you afraid of your life or were you just afraid of the possibilities, the what ifs, that what could happen, right? What relationships could spring from this? Um, how could your business grow from this, right? So there's things in our life we want, but we're afraid. And we put that word out there, okay? You guys want to be successful in this business, but you're afraid to do certain things, all right? So why do you stop? The only problem is when we let fear stop us from doing the things that we want to do, okay? The only, the only problem is when fear stops us from any kind of action. You know, um, to talk about something absolutely horrible, I can't, I, whatever, I'm going to talk about it anyway. You know, there was a, there was a couple in Utah, their, their son was killed by a black bear, and they stood and watched. They were too afraid to protect their baby. And I can't judge them, right? I can't imagine, I think I would kill the bear. I'm pretty sure with my bare hands, but I can't judge them because they were petrified and they didn't know what to do. Okay, so fear can immobilize us. It can immobilize us when it matters the most. And it's our choice right now to start mentally, like creating these mental muscles, these muscles in our brain that will help us push through fear when it matters the most. Okay? Those parents, they have, to, they have to live with themselves for the rest of their lives knowing they didn't act. Right? And if I could do anything, I'd wrap my arms around them and just hold them because I can't imagine being in that position. Okay? But what are things in your life that you want so bad and yet you're allowing fear to stop you? 
Because this matters most, guys. Yeah. I've heard most of your dreams, and they're to free your family financially. This is not a small thing. This is a big deal. Yeah. This is something that would change your life forever, that would change your kids, your grandkids' lives forever. Right? Yeah. Even if your goal is just to get your products paid for and to hit your health goals, that matters. It's important. It's a big deal. Because it means altering your family's course forever in one way or another. So these are, these are, these are big things, guys, and we can't let fear mobilize us. You know, I, I've shown you the video before. I love the video of the little girl going down the ski slope for the first time. And she's petrified. She's so scared. And you can hear her dad and mom reassuring her, you know, like, yes, it's going to be okay. Yes, it's going to be a little bit faster. Yes, it's a bigger slope. Like, it's going to be a little scary. And she finally goes, and then she's, like, screaming in elation because she's so happy. All right? So she was afraid, but it was something she wanted to do. What she wanted to do was bigger than the fear. Right? And so she did it. And guess what? Next time, she's going to go right down again, and it's going to be easier this time. And the next time, it'll be even easier. Before, before you know it, she's going to have to go to a bigger hill because that's just too easy for her. Right? And that's the same thing in life. It's the same thing in this. It is no different. Was she terrified or was she just really excited? Right? We talk about that all the time because our body – the science behind it. Our body physically reacts the same way whether we're excited or terrified. The same stuff, the same adrenaline, everything goes through our body the same way. And so I've had to kind of, the way that I've gotten over my fear, that fear of thinking, is first and foremost, I've embraced it. Knowing that I was terrified having my first baby. I was terrified marrying my husband. I was, I've been terrified like lots of times in my life. But I did it anyways because what I wanted was bigger than the fear right? And so it's, it's no different. In all those instances, yes, I was scared, but what I realized is I was more excited in the possibilities. I was more excited in the what ifs and the what would happen and, and how amazing it could be, you know? I mean, otherwise, guys, who in their right mind would go bungee jumping? Who in their right mind would go bungee jumping? <laughs> I've done it twice, and it's so scary, but if I wasn't like so excited for just the thrill of it, there's no way I would go bungee jumping because I'd be caught up in what if the rope snapped? What if I hit the ground? Da, 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 da. You know, but I wasn't. I'm not really that afraid. I, I kind of trusted the system. And Isogenics, just like, you know, Wall and Andrew talked about last week, was so awesome. You know, Isogenics has created this airplane that is perfect. They're doing all the work. All we have to do is get in and fly. They, they maintain it. They fill it with gas. They put the oil in. They, they check everything. Like, Isogenix does all the work. All we have to do is get in and fly the dang airplane. And we can be a part-time pilot. We can be a full-time pilot. That's up to us. But all we have to do is fly the airplane. Okay? All right? And so what fear, what fears are holding you back? Stop doing that. Don't be afraid of being afraid. That's the only problem in this whole scenario. Because fear is actually an amazing emotion. And it's followed by just incredible experiences. Almost every time. Okay, I can even say that there's probably been some experiences that Catherine, or sorry, that um, um, uh, Aunt Amy's had with her two kids in the bus accident. There's probably been some experiences that have come from that event that have brought their family closer together. Right? that have taught them some life lessons, that have taught them to appreciate each other a little bit more, right? I bet there's been things like that that have happened. And so even in the bad instances, we can still turn them positive. Even when somebody says no to you in the business, or the products, or whatever else, like we can turn those into positive experiences. You know, first and foremost, you guys know you hear it all the time that no's typically mean just not right now. But even if they are no's, I love, you know, that uh, Jimmy Smith always teaches us that, you know, no, the yes is build our business and the no is build our character. So there's no negative. There's no negative. <laughs> right? Okay. So um, give me some, some feedback. Like, what are you guys thinking with this? Are you, what are you taking in right now? Well, For me, one thing I've been learning... <laughs> about fear is 
And what I'm taking from you is just really continuing to use my fear to get me farther because I'm learning that if I don't fear something, it's not worth doing. Amen to that. I've always told my swimmers that. I've trained swimmers for years and years and years, and I've told them, guys, you will always be afraid before you get on the block. And if you get to a point where you're not afraid, it's because you don't care anymore. Yep. I agree. I think I have to get over my fear of bothering people. <laughs> I'm, I'm not as attached to a, a yes or a no, because if they don't want it, they don't want it. It's, it's not a reflection on me, and I don't even think it's a reflection on a product. It's just a reflection of where they are. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really afraid of bothering people. And, I, 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 and as I say it out loud, it, it seems ridiculous, but it's just there. <laughs> Good. Well, these calls are made because sometimes we have to speak the ridiculous for to realize that it is so ridiculous, right? Okay. So, so, Rebecca, the second you heard Isogenics, did you just jump on board and buy your stuff and you're ready to go? Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. I was actually the same exact way, so that's okay. Most people. Most people take up to 12 times. That is the average number is 12 times, right? Right. So all that tells you is the majority of people that are in, on this call or that are in Isogenics, it took them up to 12 times to get going. And they're avid business builders, avid product users. They are the blood work of this company. And yet, on average, it took them 12 times to join. So if they're so passionate about <laughs> Do you think they really felt that bugged or bothered by whoever enrolled them? Some of them, some of them maybe, but they still joined and they're super happy about it. <laughs> Most of them know. I mean, on it, just be honest for just a second here. Let's be really, well, we're always honest, but everybody raise your hand if you felt extremely bothered by the person who enrolled you. Shut it, Andrea. <laughs> She's being funny. So, so honestly, nobody, I don't see any hands. So nobody felt extremely bothered by the person who enrolled them? Not for, uh, for the products, but she's my wife. And so. <laughs> It may bother me in different ways, but not about the product usage. <laughs> All right. We can get on a call with the two of you later. I can talk <laughs> so there's no problems anymore. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so, I mean, that's just to address one thing. But I mean, I know you get that, Rebecca. That it is, it's just a silly thing that there's this crap, you know, we call it chicken crap between our ears. And it's just, it's just stupid stuff that goes into our ears. Like somebody's really going to get bothered. You know, when you, it's the funniest thing in the world. I do it too, guys, where you make an appointment with somebody and then, you know, you, you call them and you're kind of afraid to call them if you're going to bother them or whatever. Like, but you have an appointment. Like they're expecting you to call them. They told you to call them and you're still scared that you're bothering them. <laughs> you know? Um, so it's just, yeah, it's just a silly thing, but a lot of times we have those fears and we use distractions and things like that as like firewalls that we can hide behind, you know, things that we can hide behind so that we don't have to do the do. And then we have a way to justify why it didn't happen instead of just taking action. Okay. So anybody else want to share something they're taking away here? I loved the association of the feeling to the emotion and how if you kind of just, if we can take ourselves and we can feel the fear and maybe reassociate it with the feeling of excitement mm -hmm. instead. So when the heart starts pumping, you can maybe try and think, oh, I'm just really excited and maybe just shift the mindset from being really afraid to really excited. Mm -hmm. I, I've always thought that I've always felt like the feelings are pretty like they're it's like the same feeling. It's just how you associate it or what you're letting in your mind. So I like that point. Awesome. Very cool. Harsha. Yes, hon. I I don't know where I heard it, but I'll try to find it. But I heard someone say that every time 
they get ready to perform, they get butterflies, and their mentor said, great, get those butterflies all flying in the same direction, right? So same thing, same fear, but it's like how you harness it and, and like, I always just picture them in a net and the net, like, driving off in the direction that you want it to go, you know, like get them all together and then they go. Because we all have, we all have butterflies. Every time I go to the gym, I have nervousness before I walk in, you know, uh-huh. like I know it's not going to feel great. I know he's going to ask me to do really hard things. I know that someone older than me who's lost more fat than me is going to kick my trash every single time if I'm not on my game. Like there's a lot of stuff going on. Right. And you have to, you have to, you know, harness it or push it aside to even make it through the door sometimes. And it's, it's the same way, like speaking in public, whatever it is for you, you know, get, get them all going in the right direction. And then, then it's power instead of just fear, but I'll find out who said it. I can't remember right now. Yeah. That's awesome. Hun. Yeah. You know, I had a, and you know, Lindsay and I talked about this last year um, on a call and I think it, I think it was worthy of just repeating for just a second here that uh, most of the time, you know, there's that amazing quote about our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, right? Um, if you, I'll post that in the thread here, but um, yeah, I'm sure Andrew will post the link to that because she's really good at that stuff. But it's one of my favorite quotes. And what I have recognized with my fear in, in most things in life is I, I'm more afraid of not trying than I am of trying every time. Okay. Just a a quick example. Last week I was at the dog park. I took my dog there and there was this just awesome guy that we immediately connected. We started talking. We started talking about dogs and then military. He's in the service. And we had this amazing conversation and he kind of took off because of the dog. And I had the opportunity to go back and approach him and just simply say, I love your energy. It's been so fun connecting with you. I'd love to share more about what I do. Let's chat sometime this week and get his card. I do this all the time, guys. Um, so I should be, it should be easy for me, but I'm telling you, it's not. It can be scary. And guess what? I didn't. I didn't. I made the excuse that he was busy with his dog. I didn't want to bother him. So I didn't approach him. That was last Monday. And for the last week, you know what I mean? Like this entire week, it has bothered me every single day. Every day it's bothered me because I missed an opportunity. And life is full of missed opportunities and we can't beat ourselves up for it. But gosh, it sucks. I hate missing opportunities. That could have been great, right? That's my biggest fear is playing small when I've been asked to play big, right? And you're the same way. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care how old you are. I don't care about your, your, your physical circumstances, your financial circumstances. We know from experience that if you want to do something, you can do it. And nothing can hold you back. There is not a single excuse in the world that can hold you back from being great. I mean, all you have to do is watch the videos from these paraplegics that are, don't have any legs, don't have any arms, and they're doing incredible things. I mean, you guys have seen it. Like, there is just no excuse. The blind, playing the piano, the, I mean, we could just go on and on and on about people that have risen up from the ashes, literally, and done phenomenal things, right, and inspired the whole world. Well, why not you? Like, why not you? Like, please tell me why not you. Because <laughs> I'd love to know. It's just, it's just not there. It's not, it's not reality. You were born to do great things. And the first thing you have to do is make a decision. Every single one of us, we have to make a decision. And that decision is like drawing a line in the sand. You know, it's literally like, this is my line. This is what I will do in life. And this is what I will not do. I will not play small anymore. I was meant to do great things and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and write it out clear as day so that there's no question about what you're going to do and what you're going to accomplish. You know, I have this, I can't even show it to you guys right now because it's stuck to my wall where I can see it every day, but I have this mountain and that mountain is full of all my doubts, all my insecurities, 
all of the things that I have to do, the, the skills I have to acquire, the, the things I have to overcome. So it's not like a negative mountain, but it has negatives in it. Just like climbing any mountain, just like, you know, Andrea's talking about going to the gym. She knows it's going to hurt. I guarantee you guys what she does is kicking her butt because I know who she trains with. <laughs> right? But why does she do it? Because she knows that in order to reach her physical goals, she's going to work with one of the best and he's one of the best right? And so she's going to hurt. She's going to sweat. She's going to burn to get a result. Okay. So just like climbing a really, really hard mountain, you're going to go through altitude issues. Your lungs are going to burn. Your heart's going to pound out of your chest. Your legs are going to just be dead tired, but you have to move forward overcoming those obstacles, those hurdles, those challenges. And it's not a bad thing. We want to look at all of our weaknesses as a bad thing. Why? It's like fear. Stop beating yourself for your, for your weaknesses. We all have them. We're all imperfect. Embrace them. The second you can embrace your weaknesses, oh my gosh, your life will start changing. It's okay if you're shy. It's okay if you're embarrassed about talking in front of people. All those weaknesses, just embrace them. And when you start embracing your weaknesses and your so-called so shortcomings, you'll start turning those into strengths. Mm -hmm. right so Kathy Coover totally embarrassed totally public shy like couldn't stand talking in front of people that's why she was a dental hygienist there was no talking involved right she was scared to death of the public and of getting in front of people and yet now she does it like an, she does it like a champion she's amazing in front of people we fill our heart immediately she's so good in front of people that it was a weakness of her she turned it into a strength because she embraced it right and because even though there's a fear there, what she wanted to achieve was bigger than her fear. So I have this mountain of all my weaknesses that I'm overcoming every single day. And on top of my mountain in the sky are, is my dream life, all the things I want to achieve, all the things I want to become. I'll take a picture and post it, and you guys, I would love for you guys to work on your own mountains. And every time you write one of your fears down or your weaknesses down, I would love for you to just embrace it. And just say, it's okay. That's one more handhold for me to just grab and climb up as I reach the top. Just one more thing that I can, I can overcome. Okay? And then, of course, you got to write out your dream life. Like, that has to happen. We don't want this negative mountain full of trials. We want to see your dreams. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be an author? Do you want to be a presenter? Do you want to train trainers? Right? Do you want to be a motivational speaker? Do you just want to be an amazing mom? I mean... <laughs> don't play small like you could be the most amazing mom in the world and that's all you have to do and that's great right it's all about you what do you want to become who do you want to be what's your dream life what's your ideal life traveling the world surfing everywhere <laughs> I have a girl today that all she wants to do is go bungee jumping and surfing and hiking and mountain biking and every, everywhere in the world she just wants to travel the world doing dangerous things Sweet, awesome, okay, <laughs> but it's just as cool as, the, as whoever wants to, you know, travel the world and open up orphanages or just serve, be a teacher, okay, so just create that life, and why am I talking about this? Because one, we have to overcome these fears and embrace them. Two, we have to make decisions. We have to make decisions. And so many of you, your dreams are so just kind of like out, like blah, like they're not, they're so vague that how does the universe know how to get you there if your dreams are so vague? You know, it's the same as your health goals. I mean, I know you guys know this. If you want to reach a certain health goal, you've got to put it out there. You've got to be really like descriptive in what you want to achieve. Otherwise, your body is just going to go kind of in this vague place right? It might not be where you want it to go, <laughs> right? I know a lot of healthy people that are still super overweight, right? And I know a lot of thin people that are still really unhealthy. So be descriptive in your goals so that the universe knows where to take you. Like Andrea said, you can't just have all these butterflies flying everywhere. Let's harness those butterflies and let's have them take us to a specific place. Okay, so 
All right. Um, we're going to, we're going to go into for the next, we're going to finish the call talking about three way calls and why they're important. And I don't want me to check out because these are super important. We want to talk about how and why, but is there anything you guys want to share before we do that? Any thoughts? Um, just something that I've been doing to, to help with my fear mm -hmm. is like the power moves and not only like when I call someone a prospect or something, I make sure I get up. I do something to like get my blood going before I get on that call. A lot of times now I make sure I'm walking and talking with that call. I'm using the hand motions like I'm in front of them. Mm -hmm. And so now before the gym, I do the same thing. I drive in the car. I've got to listen to usually ACDC and <laughs> usually some air is involved wow. you know and I have to pump myself to go up there in there because now I weight lift with the big guys and I'm still over 300 pounds and that's really scary really scary because they look at me like I don't know what the heck I'm doing but I do <laughs> so I have to get myself pumped up ready to go remind me that I have all of you walking right there with me so when I have that negative talk start coming in I'll hear I even hear your voice I hear everybody's voice telling me you got this you got this you got this so whenever I and you know those people don't give a literally a crap about me at the gym they're not worried about what I'm doing they're worried about themselves so it's just my negative talk yeah um, it is your it is your negative talk and you know just this is this is an only important this is an important point guys just because it really relates to everything in life and we we have so much crap in here about what other people are thinking we make up so many stories i love david wood's whole training on this because we are famous for just making up crap all right i am the most famous you talk about pushing my buttons ignore me if you ignore me, I'm going to take it on like it is all my fault and I screwed up somehow. So if you ever want to like really bother me, just ignore me. And I shouldn't tell you guys that because my teammates here are like, ooh, <laughs> we know how to make Trisha mad now. <laughs> but it's because I'm just so sensitive and I, I take it all upon me. I make up all these lies in my head. Angela, the reality is that I guarantee the majority of people at the gym are so inspired by you. They see you working out and they're like, you go girl, keep going, don't quit. I guarantee you. Right here, here I am getting emotional. All right. No, make me it's, cry. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I promise you. Especially when you're dealing in that realm, athletes and people at the gym they love to encourage other people, and they love health and fitness. When they see somebody else trying, they just want you to succeed. And every once in a while, you get the lamos. Just ignore them because they're not worth your time. Yeah, I've, I've got to ignore a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's really a story about them. It has nothing to do with you. It is. It really is. Yeah. Thanks. You. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. So um, let's, let's go over this now because I'm excited. So three-way calls. We, we can't make up stories about three-way calls. If you're really good at enrolling somebody, if you're really crappy at enrolling somebody, you both need three-way calls equally. Can anybody tell me why? <clears throat> Third-party affirmation. Yeah, third-party validation, super important. And le but let's talk future, Andrea. Well, you need to teach other people what they should be doing, so what they can duplicate. Because if you're really good at enrolling, they if you haven't taught them that there's that support, then they think they need to be really good at enrolling. And they won't even try until they're really good at enrolling. Yeah. Heck yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Do you guys get that? Do you guys get what she just taught? Because it's so important. It is the most important part about three-way calls. Not everybody is going to be a rock star enroller, especially your new people, because they don't know what to say. They're going to verbally vomit. They're going to they're gonna say things that are not compliant. They're going to... They're, they're going to mess up. I know I did it. I know I did it. Okay? So everybody does it. So whether you're really, really good or you're not, you have to do three-way calls so that you can duplicate this in your team. Otherwise, you, you might have this, just this, this, this level of, of rock stars, 
and nothing ever goes deeper. Nothing ever happens below them because they're all so good and nobody could ever be as good as them. Okay? But when you have a rock star doing three-way calls, like I'm getting somebody, I'm not calling myself a rock star by any means, but I'm getting somebody else's help that maybe is not as good at talking as me. When I'm doing those kind of things, I'm showing my team that anybody can do this. Right? And I'm showing my team that we all do it. So what are good times to do three-way calls? Because there are going to be instances where you just have an enrollment and it just happens and you don't need anybody else's help because it just happens so quickly. That happens all the time. So what are all the different ways or times that we can do three-way calls? I guess it's probably just you have to just figure out a schedule and schedule it. Okay. So yeah, I mean, obviously you want to get the, you want to get appointments open, but what are, what are times that three-way calls can be utilized? Oh, like points like in the question. process? Yeah, so, that's a question. Um, so introducing someone to the solution that you can find someone who's had a similar experience that they want to have. So for example, um, Evelyn's lost 219 pounds. You know, maybe I introduced her to someone, which I did today, um, for a three-way Facebook message um, to talk about some of those, some of the crap that's in your head about how you're just made that way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so at the beginning, um, to answer questions, like just even if you know the answer, say you don't. <laughs> and get them on the phone with someone um, and a welcome call after they've actually enrolled. Yep. That's really helpful. I love using three-way calls with athletes or trainers because they, that is just more comfortable for them. You know, they, they might trust me, but they really want to hear what another um, athlete has to say. So totally. lots of ways. Yeah. Uh, so, so there's, I mean, I really want you guys to take notes on this because this is so important, okay? So three-way calls can be used all the time. Good job, Amy. So Andrea just hit on them, okay? Three-way calls, if they have a question, I mean, literally, guys, this is what I want you guys to duplicate. If you can duplicate anything that we teach you, it's master your 30-second story and then do three-way calls. And so for a new person, you know, my girl Allison, who just enrolled a few weeks ago, She's mastering her 30 second story. Before isogenics, I was super tired. I was nursing a baby, so I wasn't getting a lot of sleep and I couldn't lose the weight. Now, you know, I started isogenics just last month with my friend Trisha, and I've lost, you know, six pounds. But more importantly, like, I'm still not getting a lot of sleep, but I feel so much better. I have more energy. I'm, you know, I'm feeling stronger. I'm really, really happy. And I can't wait to use the whole system because the results have been amazing for all my friends. Done. Okay. I mean, that story right there is going to get a lot of interest. When she's talking to moms and friends that are tired or want to lose a few pounds, if they see that a nursing mom who's using just a small part of the system is having great results, they're going to be super interested. So see, there's the 30-second story. Well, they're going to say, okay, well, how do I get started, Allison? What do I do? And she knows that she's going to say, Okay, I just started, so I'm gonna get my friend Trisha on the call so she can answer all your questions. And I promise she's super awesome. I'm gonna talk up whoever I'm I'm gonna get on the call, whether it's you or me or anybody else. So see, I mean it was that simple. All right. They ask a question, just like Andrea said. They ask a question, how do I get started? What is it? What do I have to do? Is it shakes? All right, does it taste good? Is it expensive? Like whatever question they ask, you immediately say, I would love to add my friend so-and-so on the call. Okay. All right. Is that simple, guys? Yeah. It's so I have a question. Yeah. Oh, my phone's. I'm going to Angela. Her phone died, so no one second. <laughs> okay. So there, there's – so that, that is basically the question, 30 second to, that's a 30 second story to a three way call. Now, I don't ever call it a three way call. I never call it that. I say, can I get my good friend Andrea on the phone? All right, if I'm talking to another business builder who wants the business, 
can I get my mentor on the phone? Because they're, they're going to understand that kind of verbiage. So you're just going to say whatever feels comfortable depending on who you're talking to. And you guys will know. I mean, you'll figure it out. You might make a few blunders. That's where the fear can stop you or you can just go, yeah, I know. I'm going to screw up. We already talked about this. I know I'm going to be a disaster first. I'm going to get better at it. So you just push through it. Okay, welcome calls are crazy important because you want them to see that they have more than just your support. They have lots of people's support. It's a team they're a part of. So a Facebook message can be a three-way call, a welcome call, if they won't get on the phone with somebody. Get them on a Facebook message with two or three people that have similar stories as them, that have had success, all right? Now, for you're gonna know this because a lot of you are in either our team or somebody else's team. Sometimes it's hard to get, you know, your leader, your supposed, your supposed leader, okay? We're all, just, we're all just equals here. We're all just linked arms working together. There is no such thing as a leader. But, you know, whoever's mentoring you, that's fine. Um, and so you want to get your leaders in the call. Well, it's not really necessary, okay? All they need is a welcome call from somebody who has experienced their same story and has succeeded. Like Andrea said, they've lost a lot of weight. They're a nursing mom. They're an athlete, they're a trainer, they're a dad who works night shifts. I mean, just somebody who relates to them. That's the only important part, because now they have a friend. They have somebody who understands exactly where they're at and probably is gonna kinda help them through because they're gonna become friends, right? Guys, what is this job called? Network marketing, networking. We're networking, not just to find prospects, we're networking our teams to create strong teams with lots of support and lots of friendship, okay? So you're basically like the master friendship maker. You're like, you know, you're connecting people all the time. And the more connections you make, the better. I know that Andrea has a huge network of support across line. Most people aren't even connected to her financially, but they've linked arms. I've, I've helped in some small ways. I've helped create these connections. And she's done it on her own as well at events. All right, there's people on our team that are part of her support system, all because we're master connectors, because you can't do all the work. You can't be anybody's savior. So stop trying to be this big time, huge leader and just start making connections because that is where this job becomes successful. Okay. Can I comment on that, Trisha? Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to take a lot of time, but no, go when, for it. when the shift happened for me about networking was at um university in action like i had been to every event except university in action like i never miss an event i um, took my team to new year's kickoff and um, saw some relationships happen there and you have to kind of get out of your way as a leader when re when relationships are happening right you're like whoa <laughs> back off my dude like girl whatever you know like you're like i don't know if i want you doing that but i saw these relationships really playing out positively and so at university in action that's a, it's a lot about creating those relationships and oh my gosh you know like i can call people in hun you know hundreds of counties across the u.s and people in canada i can call them or Facebook message them, I know their story intimately, they know and trust me, and I can turn my people over to them. Like, hey, I, I, haven't, I didn't have 100 pounds to lose, mm -hmm. but guess what? I have an autoimmune, and I know how to talk to that, or I'm a single mom, and I quit my job to do this full time. I can, I can talk about that. I, you know, we all have those little things, it has been such a huge shift like for my team and for me because now we have this you know we have personal trainers we can call we have team isogenics ambassadors we can call we you know the sky really is the limit because i was able to to see that and have that shift of it doesn't matter who if they're upline downline cross line it really didn't matter in and that one team thing, like, just hit me right in the forehead. Like, okay, one team, we are isogenics and we are responsible for helping people have amazing 
results with isogenics, period, at the end. That's it. It doesn't matter who's getting paid for that result. It's our responsibility to make sure that they are loved on and have an amazing product experience. So that's that's been big. Exclamation point. Yes. Bam. Drop mic. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, go ahead. It's Angela. I'm on Michael's phone. Yep. Um, when I heard you say, Andrea, when you said, okay, so I've yet to do a three-way call with a prospect of mine. I have been asked and I've done, I don't even know how many yet for other people because they need someone to relate to my story. Right. And I'll do it, you know, hand, I, I've done it tons of times. Great. It's good practice. And when she said, pretend like you don't know what the answer is, is that right. what she said? That is what I said. <laughs> yeah. So just sometimes just open the door to just get them on that call. Yeah. Because it's not about you. It's not yeah. about you knowing the answer. It's about them knowing that there's a way to ask for the answer that doesn't involve, okay, hold on a second. Let me pull up isogenicshelp.net and find it for you. <laughs> That's huge. It, it is huge because, and here's, and here's the deal, sometimes because you're afraid, you have this thought in your head that you have to know everything or nobody's going to follow you. If you're not like, you know, you know everything, nobody's going to want to follow you as a leader. And that's bull. That's such a lie. People don't care if you know everything as long as you know where to get it. You know where to get the, do you know where to get the product information? Do you know where to get the videos from start? Do you know where to get you know, the ice body challenge stuff, if you know where the tools are, that's all they care about. They, you don't have to know all the answers, but what they will buy into is someone who loves them and will listen to them, will pour belief into them and will have their backs, right? If, if, you're, if you're confident you can do that, then guys, that's the fun part. If you can just be confident in being this amazing cheerleader and coach, the tools are all there for you. And that's Andrea's whole point is I know a lot of answers. I mean, you can't be an ice genetics for two years and go to every single event and, and listen to every podcast. You know, that's what I've done. Of course I know the answers. But I love to play dumb because I can't answer questions all day long like that. <laughs> but I can send people the tools. And my teammates get mad at me sometimes because they ask me a question. I'm like, have you checked at isoproduct.com? Have you gotten on a call with Dr. Ina? I mean, that's what I do all day long because I just don't have time and not only that, but I have to duplicate myself. And people can't duplicate me. Right. And on that note, go find Angelique Nori really quick. Today she did a live post on either being employed by your team or empowering your team. And it, I mean, wow. You know, there's only one of you. So teach them and be duplicatable and get on the phone and make sure that when you're on the phone with their person that you are, they're on with you, that you're not taking over because you do know it all. Because right. pretty soon you're working for 2,000 people and that's called corporate America. <laughs> that's not fun. It's not fun at all. Right. And it's really selfish, right? I mean, in the end, it's really, it, it feels like you're building yourself up, but you will be beat down, I promise, if that's, if that's the path that you take. Yep. Okay, guys, so we have a few minutes left. Everybody shake it out. We're almost done. A few minutes left. Come on, Amy. Do your power move, girl. <laughs> Come on, Dawn. Power move time. I can't tell what Susie's doing because her screen is frozen. But I'm assuming she's doing her power move right now. So we have a few minutes left. What does a three-way call look like? Guys, there's a great YouTube video on this. There's tons of information, iTunesBusiness.com. So here I am giving you the tools that you can better master this. All right, I'm gonna go over a few things that are key. In my opinion, they're very, very important. Okay, and I've experienced all kinds of three-way calls. So I've experienced all the don'ts and the do's. Okay, if you are getting on a three-way call, first and foremost, you have to edify the person you're getting on the call with. And the more you do this, the more you'll feel comfortable because it's always gonna change. If it's a girlfriend, you're getting on a call with my girlfriend, who's been so good at losing weight, she's been so successful, yada, yada, yada. You wanna build them up, but you don't wanna build them up so much that they're not duplicatable. 
right? You don't need to overdo it. You need to make them relatable, okay? In fact, if you know something fun about them, like if you're talking to a biker and you know that you have an athlete who's also an avid biker, use that because they're going to care more about that piece than they're going to care about the weightlifting, right? People just want to connect with other people that love their stuff. Catwoman, get them on the call with their Catwoman and they'll talk the whole night long, all right? <laughs> if you don't like cats, get them on a call with somebody else who doesn't like cats and they'll have a good conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, I love kittens. Just I get allergic. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so edify the people. Just don't make them some kind of god, okay? Because we don't do that. It's not necessary, okay? Also, think outside the box. Get creative. Andrea was talking about trainers to trainers. Well, you know what else is a really powerful three-way call? If you're trying to get a trainer to enroll and you get a client on the phone, somebody who's had great results after going to years and years and years with trainers, it was just too hard. Get that person on a call with the trainer to say, you know what, I respect trainers so much. I still have a trainer, but I struggled for years. I just couldn't figure out how to meal prep and I just have all these kids and life was just so hard and I was trying my best. And this system has completely simplified my life and has changed me so much. And now I'm with the same trainer, but I'm getting awesome results. That would be a powerful call because the heartache of every trainer out there is that their clients just can't do what they ask them to do. And it's a big issue. And every trainer you get on a call with will understand that issue. That's why our trainers love Isogenics so much because their clients start getting real results. Okay, so think out of the box. All right, now when you get on the call, you have to do a couple things. You have to edify, right? Obviously, we have to edify the person again on the call. So, Andrea, thank you so much for getting on this call with me. You know, um, Catherine has experienced so many of the things that, you, that you've talked about. She's a single mom, and, you know, she, she got started nice for the products, but she's become very successful in not only getting her products paid for, but actually bringing in an income. You know, and she's getting close to getting to the point where she can, you know, let go of this job that she's been at for years and, and she can spend more time with her kids. So I wanted you guys to connect. All right. So I'm edifying Catherine and I'm sharing a little bit of her story and then Catherine can, can start talking, you know, and this is the important part. <laughs> Once you edify this person, shut your mouth. You don't talk anymore. Okay, you don't talk anymore, and I've experienced the don'ts of this a lot, where I got a call, I'm supposedly the expert, but they won't keep their mouth shut. And what's happening is the person on the phone is going, why is this person on the call with me? Like, if I can just talk to you the whole time, why am I not just talking to you, right? Why did we get this person on the call? And it just becomes awkward. So guys, this is the fun part. I mean, I've changed so many diapers. I've vacuumed my house. I've done so much stuff while I was on a three-week call because somebody else was talking and I was on mute. Okay, so this is the fun part. I love being, I love the one organized here three-week calls. I don't have to do anything. I just gotta edify and I'm out. <laughs> now, I'm not telling you to totally like walk away from the phone, so I'm a bad example. But the, you guys get what I'm saying, right? Yes. Okay. Edify and then shut your mouth. And when you're asked to get back involved, then you can get involved. You have to trust the person that you've asked to get on your call. If you don't trust them, don't use them. Yeah. If you don't trust them, don't use them. And how do you build that trust? Well, you have conversations. You know, and if I'm going to use Andrea on a call or Debbie on a call or Angela or Donna, whoever, I'm going to call them first. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain the situation. Listen, this person is really skeptical about network marketing. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm just getting them an interest in the products. Like, I'm going to explain the situation, and then I'm going to trust them to do the right thing. All right? And if I've had good experiences, I know they're going to be good. If I haven't, well, we're just going to have to wait and see. All right? And if it's bad, well, I won't use that person again. <laughs> Right, but if you give them a framework, more than likely they're gonna stay in that framework. They're gonna stay in your plan because you've explained the situation, okay? 
Mm -hmm. Right? Make sense? Yes. Okay. And then, and then to close it, that's the fun part. I always thank them for their time. I always just show my appreciation. Catherine, thank you so much for sharing your story. I knew it'd be so amazing. And I knew that Andrea would relate to you. I just appreciate you so much. Andrea, thank you for taking your time out. I know this might have even been weird for you, but I'm so thankful we got on the call. It was just a fun time. And, and I hope that you guys really were able to share some important things with each other. Right? And that's it. You get off. It was a great experience. How long should three-way calls be? Yeah, that's a good question. How long, guys? What do you think? Andrew, 15 minutes. Who agrees with Andrew? Raise your hand. That'd be great. <laughs> yes. 15 minutes in out. And how do I do this? If I'm the person setting up the call, Andrew, thank you so much for getting on the call. I have Catherine on the phone. You know, I've already told her how amazing you are. That we're great friends. We've been, we've been friends forever and that you're a single mom looking to lose some weight. I know Catherine only has 15 minutes, but I'm so grateful she got on the call with me because because blah, 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 blah. Now I'm gonna edify her. So I always set up my calls that way right away. I tell them immediately how much time we have so that it's not awkward. Right? Yeah. And this is why, <laughs> and I've done this before. If you get on a call and things are going great, just like a business training, we, we make this mistake all the time. That's why I'm gonna end this call in two minutes, like I promised, because Sometimes when things are going great and you feel like the training's amazing or the call's amazing, you just keep talking and it is a good experience, the people will get off the call and they'll be like, holy crap, we just talked for an hour. Like that was too much time out of my day. And so they just took a positive experience and it turned negative, even though it was good. This makes sense? Mm -hmm. Whereas like if you are like powerful in, out, 15 minutes, they're going to be like, wow, that was amazing. And it wasn't anything out of their day. It didn't take any time up. Right? Mm -hmm. And then just like Andrea just said, <laughs> we finish when we promise. And this has been hard, hard for a lot of trainers. Right? Hard for a lot of people because we have so much to say. Guys, this is not about you. It's about them. All right? So keep your promises. Finish when you say you're going to finish. Right? This is about them. It's not about you talking and sharing your whole life story. The caller, the, the, the expert, this is about listening to their problem and just sharing a solution. This is not about you as an expert getting on the call and spending 30 minutes sharing your story. I barely share my story when I'm the expert. I listen, I ask questions, I give a powerful 30 second story, and then I answer whatever they have to talk about. Okay? All right, good? <laughs> Thumbs up. Don didn't fall asleep. I was a little worried for a there. <laughs> Heather, did you have any questions, hon? I'm good. I've really enjoyed it. Oh, good. Awesome. Okay. Well, before the clock says 9.01, I'm going to end this call. But I uh, love you guys. You were so fun tonight. And let's get on the call next week and invite more people, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. We're going to go back to 30-second stories next week. So get ready for that. Get ready. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.